The question is, if we are so able to be healthy and young, why do we get sick? One of the most important reasons is stress. I will now show you how stress works using cells and then people. So I put cells in a petri dish and I split the group into two dish, two sets. In one set, I put nutrients in front of the cells. The other, I put toxins in front of the cell. I put them back in the incubator and I come back later and take them out. Where do you think the cells are in each experiment? When you come back, when nutrients are in the dish, the cells move toward the signals as positive growth signals. But when toxins are in the dish, the cells move away from the threatening negative signals. So when the cell sees something that gives growth, they move to the signal with their arms open to take it in. But if the cells see toxins, then what they do is they move away from the signal and close themselves down. Cells cannot be open and closed at the same time. Cells cannot move forwards and backwards at the same time. The conclusion, cells can be in growth or they can be in protection, but they can't be in both at the same time. So in summary, cells move to positive signals when they're in growth. They're attracted to positive signals. And cells will move away from negative signals. Uh, they'll be repulsed, but they're in protection. But there are signals that are neither positive or negative. I call them elevator music. When you get in the elevator, you don't dance, but you don't get sick. But the same thing happens in humans. The mind will perceive the environment. And if it sees what it believes to be threatening, it will send a signal to the cells telling them that the environment is not supporting. And the system is called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The hypothalamus is the part of the brain that interprets the perception. When the hypothalamus sees stress, it wants to tell the whole body something is going on. So it sends a signal to the pituitary gland, which is called the master gland. And that gland sends signals to 50 trillion cells. But if it's a threat, it will send the signals to the adrenal glands. And the common understanding of the adrenal glands is fight or flight. Then the adrenal glands release stress hormones to the body. And the first thing the stress hormones do, and I'll, I'll make a quote from a physiology textbook. The stress hormones cause the blood to preferentially go to the arms and legs. And why the preference for arms and legs? So you can run or fight. If the blood is preferentially going to the arms and legs, where was the blood before it was going to the arms and legs? It was in the viscera. And what's the function of the viscera? Growth? Health, maintenance, okay? So then logic, if the blood leaves the viscera, what happens to your ability to grow and maintain yourself? It goes down, and the reason is when you're in protection, you shut off growth. So like the single cell, the whole body is in growth or protection, but not both at the same time. Now, some people think of growth from a, from a baby to an adult, but Everybody needs to grow every day. Even if you're a hundred years old, you need to grow every day. And the reason is, is that your cells are dying every day. Billions and billions of cells, like the, the lining of the gut, has to be replaced every three days. That's why chemotherapy is very toxic. Because chemotherapy kills dividing cells, whether they're cancer cells or normal cells. That's why people that are on chemotherapy have trouble with digestion, and they're also their hair falls out and doesn't come back, and the skin doesn't grow well. So if your days are filled with stress, then you are putting lots of hormones in your body to direct you for fight or flight. And that is why you start to get sick when you're under stress because you are not replacing the cells at the normal rate. Okay, now there's another important effect about stress. When the hormones go from the hypothalamus to the pituitary and then to the adrenal gland, it releases 
the stress hormones. As I said, the stress hormones cause the blood to go from the gut to the periphery because the hormones squeeze the blood vessels in the gut closed. And the function of the stress hormones is to take the energy of the body and get it all to run and fight. So the stress hormones will shut off the functions of things that will not be needed in fight or flight. One of the most uh, uh, important uses of energy in the body is the immune system. And now think of this, the logic. Let's say you have um, a bacterial infection and you have diarrhea and a lion is chasing you. How much energy should you put in to fight the infection and how much energy should you put in to run away from the lion? Forget the immune system because if the lion eats you, then the bacteria are his problem. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue is this. Stress hormones shut off the immune system. And the significance is every one of you right now is infected with almost all of the disease germs that humans have. Right now, if I take a blood sample, I will show you you all have viruses and bacteria and parasites. And you might say, well, if I'm infected, then why am I not sick? Because if your immune system is working properly, it will suppress these parasites and germs. But the moment you start to shut off the immune system, then these organisms begin to start growing again. So the idea that you catch a disease is not really true. You already have the disease. And the medical people call these germs and parasites opportunistic organisms. So if you are under stress, and you, sh and you shut off the immune system, then you give these organisms the opportunity to then make the disease. And yet, when we get some of these diseases, we go to the medical doctor and they give us drugs to kill the germs and the bacteria. Well, this is very helpful if the disease is going very quickly. That was not the problem in the first place. The problem was stress that shut off the immune system. So to get healing is, okay, treat the disease, but also treat the stress. Okay, so now we have two problems with stress. It shuts off growth and it shuts off the immune system. There's a third problem which I call, it's adding more stress, a third problem. When you are in fight or flight, do you think you use conscious reasoning or reflex behavior? You use reflex behavior. So, very important, listen. The stress hormones, I said before, squeeze the blood vessels in the gut causing the blood to go to the periphery. But when the stress hormones come into the body, they also go to the brain and they squeeze the blood vessels in the front of the brain where consciousness is to push more blood to the back for reflex behavior. That means when you're under stress, you are less intelligent. And for my example, I give you the people of the United States. And the reason is the government knows this. And ever since 911, they keep in the media, the newspaper, the television, more stress, more stress, and the result is very important. And the importance is this, since 911, every year, the pharmaceutical companies have made 20% more profit every year. In five years, 100% more profit in selling drugs. So it's important to realize that stress affects you in many different levels, but all of them result in shutting down your life. Now, the issue is, when we are in this direction in protection, we shut off growth and that's when illness starts. So when we're on this side of the scale, protection leads to disease and growth leads to wellness. And I said, well, what causes this disease? And the answer is stress. Now here's the problem that people do not realize. If I just remove the stress from my life, where am I on the scale? It's zero. If you want wellness, it's not just the absence of stress. You need the joy and the love to go to growth. So if you're in the middle place, you're not in real growth and real health. So stress alone is not the problem. It is what we need is more love and life and happiness.